This is Kilgore right here. Today, we will be ranking Robo Inc's campaign player attacks from the best to worst. Before we start, you should like this video and subscribe to become under 2,000 subscribers gang, especially before 2023. So, we will be ranking and grouping 1 stars differently from 2 and 3 stars because they are in separate leagues of their own. We will be using paint and we'll be ranking them from A to F or S to F for 2 and 3 stars tactics. Alright, let's start ranking them. First up, Accelerated Training. It's good for faster soldiers. Good quality of life buff, A tier. Advanced Expert. Well with an expert, it's good for concentration or stabilization in a few of these zones. And but you will run out of money eventually. So B, B tier. Advanced garrisons. To start with two garrisons. Pretty good. The defining surgeons early game will be significantly easier. So it's going to be a B tier. It has to be placed in the right zones or else um the garrison effect won't be that big unless you're using a, a um, garrison civil support rush. Or, or to rank tanks. It's allow tanks to go into mountains. But if you don't have a tank, it's pretty much useless sitting there looking pretty. So I would say it could be B tier, but we're going to place an A C tier. Armored Division. Actually, that's it's the only tank is only useful if you want to push insurgents out of rural and urban zones. They increase hostility significantly. Not very really useful. So see it here too. Coordinate fire teams. In remote zones, they can actually boost each other and win fights quicker. So it's going to be in A tier. Combat simulation. Hmm, very interesting one. You lose, you get another chance. If you lose, you might as well lose. A D tier. Only not F tier because it can still be used to save your campaigns. Maybe it can save your campaigns. Hot Wheels. Mini. Um, teleportation machine if you have an expert. If not, use us. It will be in B tier. Dangerous driving kills three insurgents when entering a zone. Hmm, you can actually kill insurgents just by entering, leaving, entering, leaving, but you'll need a tank. So C tier. Delta funding can go into that, but expense of reputation. It's basically an invisible twenty dollars, or you start with some reputation. Not really that useful, but it's not that bad. So it's a C, no C tier. Early engagement, free raw support level, actually very good. Plus two levels of PR, excellent. A tier. Expressional shots, actually after the after the buff downgrading it from 2 stars to 1 star is actually a viable choice because you can use smuggling and your favorite advisors for the rest of the campaign. That is so much more useful than trying to iron man your way out. So B tier. Fiscal windfall. Money when zones stabilize. Hmm. When urban zones stabilize especially. Hmm. Actually ish goes well, it's free money, it's 12 bucks, helps you with against insurgency, A tier. Fundraising campaign, extra 20, 12 dollars, not bad, A tier. Heavy fortifications, uh, you should be defending your zones from the insurgents EOA, so it's not that useful and doesn't protect against embassies. And so useless, F tier. Intelligence scouting provides four zones with intel at the start of the game and funds. 
one level of Intel initiative, not bad, not bad, a C tier. Long range scanner, drones can scan more zones at a time, D tier. Mere campaign starts with thermal reputation, uh, it covers one free collision long extension reputation damage, so it's going to be a B tier. Modern Warfare, increased soldier combat strength. Hmm. It does increase national soldier strength. Uh, B tier. Morale boost, increases coalition soldier deployment time when winning battles. Actually, extremely good. Because that means that when you keep fighting, keep moving soldiers around, keep um, defending positions with one soldier, it can last you a long, long time. So that's good. Neighborhood development spends more money to roll out more initiatives and zones. Uh, not that useful, but you need experts. So C tier. Preemptive strikes. Double edged sword for preemptive strikes because at the same time it delays the insurgency and increases hostile population and insurgent control zones in maps 3, 4, and 5 of the campaign. So I would say it will be a C tier. Remote specialist clears fights better in remote zones and clears caves super fast, A tier. Rural and urban specialist, I would say B tier because it will fight better in rural zones, which where most of the fight happens. Urban specialist not like this one. It's B tier because it can clear catacombs really fast. Drone manual drones, eh? Useless without laundry scanners, so D tier. Manual air strikes, ah. Uh, they're not that good, but who am I complaining? C tier. Chip wires. Why would you want to lose the garrison? Remind me again. But it's good if you uh, if you have a tech that spawns the garrisons when it blows up a camp and it's like a mini airstrike. I mean nuclear bomb. I would say it's still really bad without it. So F tier. War censorship. No web loss when insurgents take zones, very good, especially at those hard to reach cities in southern desert. Good A tier. Actually, B tier. Alright, this is our 1 star ranking. Now we will be ranking 2 star tactics. And we are moving all the characters down one by one row. And we are Introducing S tier and discontinuing F tier because no tat one star tactic is truly worthy of an S tier and no two star is stupid enough to be an F tier. All right, first up, advanced coalition soldier. Not really useful. You can clear out zones early game because the insurgency will immediately start. So C tier plus they withdraw. So. Advanced National Soldiers, same thing, but they are forever so B tier. Advanced Warfare makes National Soldiers actually capable of fighting machines, and National and Coalition Soldiers become super effective. They can fire alone in urban zones with, with high insurgent strength. That is always going to be an S tier. Very good. Community Development funds like seven free initiatives in the in the initiative tabs very good s tier counter intelligence not that useful if you have if you want to cancel split run that's obviously very good but you won't want to cancel easy tactics like social distancing so it'll be an a tier government takeover hmm if you have the trip wires that ray f earlier and you drop and you airstrike a camp and it turns into a garrison, it immediately turns into like a mini nuke and it kills everyone, every insurgent in the zone. That is actually not that bad, so it will be in B tier. Informants reveals, reveals camps in all zones after the insurgency starts, even in no intel zones. That is very good. A tier. Mass advanced garrisons alone, it's not bad. But if you pair this with General's 3 stone garrisons, 2 
A vast garrison is like you start, you start with 9 garrisons, if you plus HU it will be 10. Very good. I will give this a A tier. Most fundraising, uh, you start with extra 35 bucks, good for military rush and civilian. You never, you almost never run out of money. Mon you almost never run out of money early game. Plus, it pays well with general's um, price increase on civilian initiatives. So, A tier. Mass intelligence scouring. It was, it was without the buff of spring cleaning update. It will be complete garbage with only six extra zones revealed at the start of the game. Now it also funds two intel initiatives. So from F tier over here, you can see this to a C tier. It's not bad, but it's not the best. Mass media campaign. Uh, sorry, turning more reputation. It's not bad. You can withstand insurgency and coalition soldier deployment. Damage on your reputation, it, so it's a good B tier. Outreach office paired with community development, super OP. Paired with initiatives that roll out that increase your support level is obviously overpowering. It also can roll out police really fast. So I say it's going to be a S tier. Overwatch, eh? I mean, it doesn't stop insurgent ambushes. So D tier. Private military contractors. That is very good. If you have multiple zones stable, you have a lot of money. I mean, you should have a lot of money. You can actually have coalition soldiers forever in your region. So I would say A tier. Propaganda team. Eh, it's nerfed after being buffed to two stars. It's not that useful. B tier. Role building funds. 4 out of 6 world ninjas for free, gives your soldiers significant speed buff, and you don't have to pay for it, A tier. Cyber support counters many in insurgent tactics like split and run, ambushes, I would say this is actually really good because it actually kills like insurgents, so S tier. Manual garrisons, eh. I mean, garrisons prevent insurgent camps from start spawning. I will actually pick this, so A tier. Windfall tax. Good quality of life buff, decent for more money for stable zones, B tier. Committed coalition. Coalition soldiers stay forever. That, that is very good. A S tier. In S tier. Development roadmap. Eh. It's not, not much better. It doesn't even prove help against protests it's not even that good over three three star since you should be satisfying civilian concerns EOA B tier expectation management no web loss from lack of stability A tier not S tier because you should be stabilizing stones go standard eh it's not that powerful after the nerf Ruben to S if it's two two stars, but now it's three stars, so it's A tier. On the job training, actually S tier because it can you can have more than nine soldiers because um, five coaching soldiers will withdraw, four and you can train yourself. One is when they withdraw. Personal teleports eight S tier teleports instantly. Zero logistics, you don't even need role building. Very good. Zero tolerance, no corruption. No more dying because of corruption. Yes. S tier. And that's it folks. My opinion and ranking of all player tactics in campaign mode. What you want to see next? Leave them in the comments. So don't forget to like and subscribe for more productions. Or videos like this one. So, this is Kilgore Red, and I will see you in the next video.